Thank you very much, Dr. Gerard. Our next presenter, Grand Chief Ron Evans, is the former Chief of Norway House Cree Nation and was elected as Grand Chief of the Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs in 2005. He has received the Council for Advancement of Native Development Officers Economic Development Award, the Golden Jubilee Medal, and the Order of the Buffalo Hunt. At this time, I would ask Grand Chief Ron Evans to please come forward to address the gathering, and following the remarks of Grand Chief Evans, a gift presentation will take place. Thank you, Madam. Tanse Anin Opitu Waste Buzu Watse. Hello. I am pleased to be here on this historic occasion in the wisdom and in the spirit of our ancestors and all those who have sacrificed their lives so that we could be here on this special day to honor the First Nation treaties that were signed as nation to nation on our traditional lands from 1871 to the early 1900s. I thank the elders from the Rosso River Anishinaabe First Nation Treaty One for leading in today's uh, ceremonies. I want to thank Elder Charlie Nelson for the pipe ceremony, Elder uh, Anna Peranto for the opening prayer, and uh, I want to thank Elder Peter Atkinson who will be providing the closing prayer. I also thank the Elders Council of the Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs and Treaty Relations Commission for their hard work, the Treaty Commissioner, and, and their guidance in planning today's event. I want to thank the, the uh, Ichimakwa singers as well as the uh, Spirit Sands Drum Group for participating and assisting us today. Of course, I want to acknowledge the chiefs that are here, my colleagues, Grand Chief Swan Shanakapu and Grand Chief Harper, uh, our Regional Chief Bill Travers, and our guest chief, uh, Grand Chief uh, Guy Lonechild from the Federation of Saskatchewan Indian First Nations, as, and of course uh, our, our Treaty Commissioner Whitebird, and all the elders that are here with us, uh, the women, the children, the young people, as well as the veterans, and all the special guests that are here with all of us. And to the chiefs, uh, the chiefs that are here, there are chiefs that are here that are descendants from the original signatories to the treaties. I acknowledge the coming together of the Manitoba First Nations and the government of Manitoba leadership here today. As First Nation leaders, we join together with his honor, the Honorable Lieutenant Governor Philip Lee, Premier Greg Salinger, Leader of the Opposition Hugh McFadden, and Provincial Liberal Party Leader Dr. John Gerard, as well as the many distinguished members of this Legislative Assembly. I also acknowledge and recognize the late Minister Oscar Lathlin for his vision in ensuring that all Manitobans have a better understanding of the treaty relationship. I thank his family for their continued support and the honoring of his legacy. Today we join together with the provincial government in, in the Manitoba legislature. Above the east door of this historic building, stands a symbolic representation of the treaties. There you will find a First Nation chief and a soldier that flank the Ark of the Covenant, or we believe a war chest. This imagery could very accurate, accurately symbolize the solemn oath we all made in the eyes of our Creator when we signed the treaties with each other. The treaty-making process has always been important for First Nations people as we view treaties as living agreements which need to be recognized and renewed on a regular basis. Our ancestors agreed to share our land with the newcomers based on the understanding that First Nation peoples would benefit from an honorable, respectful, mutual relationship with the Crown, similar to the types of treaties and arrangements that were entered into between First Nations peoples prior to European contact. As directed by our elders, one of the responsibilities is to bring life to our treaties. 
to advance an understanding of the treaty relationship, to protect, maintain, and advance treaty rights, and to work towards treaty implementation. For First Nations, entering into a treaty meant entering into a respectful relationship, one grounded in our ancient practices of ensuring balance and mutual benefits. We understood that the treaty relationship would benefit both parties from our rich land and all our resources. So though we had our own medicines, the treaties included the right to medicines for new diseases that might be brought by the newcomers. Though we had our own educational systems, our leaders knew that their children and grandchildren and future generations would need the education necessary to secure a livelihood in a changing economy. The inherent and treaty right to benefit from our lands and resources, including water, all of these were planned for the next seven generations. It is for this reason that initiatives such as treaty land entitlement are so important for us. These must be fulfilled. As one of our chiefs who negotiated Treaty 3, Chief Penais, and I quote him, it is our chiefs, our young men, our children, and great-grandchildren, and those that are to be born that I represent here, and it is for them I ask for terms, end of quote. These terms include our culture and language, which is the backbone of our identity. Our culture and language must be continually maintained and preserved. Honoring First Nations Treaties Day provides an opportunity for all Manitobans, especially our youth, future generations, and new Canadians to understand the spirit and intent of the number treaties, specifically 1 to 11. To understand the honor of the Crown in this relationship and the treaties are the foundation on which both Canada and Manitoba have been built. For as long as the sun shines, grass grows, and the waters flow. Egusani, Miigwech, Masichu, Wopita, thank you. I have two gifts that I, I will present on behalf of the Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs. I would invite Deputy Speaker Marilyn Brick to come and receive it. So I am presenting this gift to the, to the Legislative Assembly in recognition of our partnership to acknowledge and honor First Nation treaties. Deputy Speaker Marilyn Brick, please accept this gift on behalf of the Legislative Assembly of the Government of Manitoba. Uh, second gift, on behalf of the Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs, uh, the next, give, uh, next gift I am presenting is to the Treaty Relations Commission of Manitoba in recognition of our partnership to acknowledge and honor First Nation treaties. Treaty Commissioner Dennis Whiteberg, please accept this gift on behalf of the Treaty Relations Commission of Manitoba. Thank you very much, Grand Chief Evans, for your words and for sharing gifts with uh, presenters today. Our next presenter, Treaty Commissioner Dennis Whitebird, served for 18 years as Chief of Rolling River First Nation. He is a former regional 
Chief of the Assembly of First Nations and is also a former Grand Chief for the Assembly of Chiefs. He was appointed Treaty Relations Commissioner for Manitoba in 2005. It is my distinct pleasure to ask Treaty Commissioner Dennis Whitebird to please come forward for his address to the group. And following his address, Commissioner Whitebird will present the beaded mace runner and star blanket cushion. He will also present the Treaty Advocacy Award and also participate in a gift presentation. Thank you. I want to uh, <clears throat> say first of all, bonjour, Dene Maganek. Now come and go in Indigo, Makwando then. Minugishigan, Nongom. And I want to thank uh, my good friend the elder from Rosa River, Charles Nelson, for giving us a, a great opportunity this morning to experience one of our primary ceremonies in, a, in First Nations uh, way. And I also want to, on behalf of the Treaty Relations Commission, I want to welcome you all to this uh, very historic day uh, particularly in Treaty 1 territory. And uh, with that, I want to also thank um, Anna Paranto for leading us in an opening prayer. In, in our way of doing business, we also want to recognize our youth as well as the, the women in our community. There are many people that I that I need to recognize, and I apologize for that. I want to acknowledge the Honorable Philip S. Lee, the Lieutenant Governor of Manitoba, for joining us here today, and also for his uh, words of uh, very wise words with respect to our treaties. I want to also acknowledge the Honorable, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> The Honorable Marilyn Brick, the Deputy Speaker of the House. Uh, Grand Chief Ron Evans, the Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs. Grand Chief Morris Swan Shanakapo, Southern Chiefs Organization. Grand Chief David Harper, Manitoba Kiwitno Gimakanak. Grand Chief Guy Lonechild from the Federation of Saskatchewan Indian Nations. I also want to acknowledge the Honorable Dr. Uh, Gregory Selinger for the Premier of Manitoba, the, the Honorable Mr. Eric Robinson, the Deputy Premier of Manitoba, the Honorable Mr. Hugh McFadden, the Leader of the Opposition, the Honorable Dr. John Gerard, the Leader of the Liberal Party. I must also recognize the, the elders that are amongst us, our honored guests. I also want to recognize the Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs, Executive Council of Chiefs. <clears throat> this is a really good time for me to be losing my voice. Uh, I apologize for that. And I also want to recognize the members of the Legislative Assembly, those of you that joined us. I also want to recognize the Manitoba First Nation Chiefs that are seated uh, amongst us. I want to thank the Spirit Sand Singers, the drum group from uh, Swan Lake, and those of you that live here in the city. Uh, I also want to acknowledge Nijimakwa school choir for, for joining us today and uh, giving us a, a great opportunity in, in language and also in music and, and uh, so on and so forth. I want to say that, first of all, the drum, and this is a part of the history of today, that the 
this is probably the first time that we've ever had a, a, a traditional drum uh, in this building. Uh, and the song that was sung is, is part of the history of today. And, and with the song that they sang, the songs that they sang for us today, calls on the spirit of our ancestors, uh, those that have left us the legacy of treaty 139 years ago. And, and I thank them very much for, for, for joining us today. And although he's not in attendance with us today, I would like to thank the Honorable George Hicks, the Speaker of the House, for his tireless efforts and support relative to this event. I, I spoke with George uh, last Friday, and uh, I was uh, upset with him, and uh, he, he finally he said, uh, I, 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 I will be there in spirit. I will be there to join you. So today is an excellent opportunity to celebrate treaty and the transfer of treaty knowledge. In 2005, the late Minister Oscar Lathlin and the Treaty Relations Commission began discussions about the concept of honoring First Nation treaties at the Manitoba Legislature. The goal of the event, as discussed, is to promote and enhance the treaty relationship between the government of Manitoba and all First Nations. The, the concept was presented to the parties and submitted to Cabinet. Support was expressed to have such an event in Manitoba. Our planning committee's approach was cautious, was careful, and, and today here we are celebrating and honoring the treaties and the treaty relationship. As a treaty commissioner, it is my responsibility to to articulate the role of the Treaty Relations Commission of Manitoba. The Treaty Relations Commission of Manitoba is a neutral organization that works to educate all people about the treaties that were made 139 years ago between First Nations and the Crown. The Treaty Relations Commission of Manitoba's mandate is to strengthen, rebuild, and enhance the treaties the treaty relationship and mutual respect as envisions, envisions, <laughs> I'm having difficulties, by the treaty parties. The Commission's work in the past five years has focused on public education, research, and facilitation. It is important to note that one of the guiding principles of the TRCM is that the involvement of First Nation elders is fundamental to understanding treaty relationships. The elders have stated that if you have history, you have pride. The TRCM would like to thank the elders of Manitoba and the AMC, the Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs Council of Elders, for their commitment, dedication, and support. With the support of the elders, the Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs and Indian and Northern Affairs Canada, the Treaty Relations Commission is able to create an environment for understanding and reconciliation. To assist in relationship building and cooperation, as well as secure a foundation for future collaboration in areas such as environment, sustainability, diversity, and a vibrant coexistence. The Treaty Relations Commission encourages understanding understanding of the role that the treaties played in Manitoba's history and by extension Canada's history. We encourage our neighbours to look at each other as partners in the future of this country. Their perspectives are essential and we must maintain principles of honour and respect in our coexistence. As part of our public education and awareness campaign, the Treaty Relations Commission is proud to have spearheaded the Manitoba Treaty Curriculum, Treaty Lessons for Grades 5 and 6. The curriculum will provide teachers with an outcome-based resource with foundation-building information, outside links and educational materials to facilitate teaching about the treaties. The Manitoba Treaty Curriculum will be piloted starting September 2010 at several schools in Manitoba. 
It is intended that the cur curriculum will then be expanded to cover all grade levels in, in subsequent years. The Treaty Relations Commission of Manitoba recommends and seeks commitment from all parties for mandatory treaty education in Manitoba. Other milestones in the Treaty Relations Commission public education mandate include the Treaty Relations Commission Speakers Bureau, which works to create an understanding about the number of treaties. The Treaty Relations Commission of Manitoba has a learning center which provides a forum for all Manitobans to hear and learn firsthand about the treaty relationship. The Treaty Relations Commission also launched a public awareness campaign entitled, We Are All Treaty People in Print, Media and Television. The intent of the campaign is to present the concept to the general public in an effort to create dialogue about their understanding and role within the treaty relationship. The Treaty Relations Commission is also proud to have commissioned a treaty play entitled Kinnikinnick. The Governor General award-winning playwright Ian Ross created the piece which serves to educate and share experiences relative to the treaty and treaty relationship. The play will be presented later today for your enjoyment. Treaties were made in the spirit of coexistence for all people in Manitoba. With an unwavering commitment to ongoing dialogue and cooperation, the Treaty Relations Commission is working to create a better understanding of how the treaties relate to every Manitoban. The treaty relationship is based on the following principles. Respecting each other's sovereignty, developing a kinship-based relationship with newcomers, reciprocity through sharing of each other's best gifts and mutual obligation to uphold the treaty. The federal and provincial governments were reminded by the Queen Elizabeth II on her Canadian tour in 1973 of the treaty relationship. You may be confident of the continual cooperation of my government, which represents your people as it represents all the people of Canada. You may be assured that my government of Canada recognizes the importance of full compliance with the spirit and terms of your treaties. The Manitoba government and all Manitobans have treaty responsibilities that began in 1871 and were recognized and affirmed in 1930 with the Natural Resources Transfer Act. Manitoba is constitutionally obligated under the 1930 Manitoba Natural Resources Transfer Agreement to set aside unoccupied Crown land so that Canada can fulfill its outstanding treaty obligations to First Nations. In addition, Manitoba is also constitutionally obligated under the same agreement to ensure that First Nation treaty right to hunt, fish and trap is honored. However, the only treaty implementation that has occurred here in Manitoba is the ongoing development towards settling of outstanding treaty land entitlement. This must change. We must look towards reconciliation of our history and our obligations. The Supreme Court of Canada has suggested that finality of agreements between First Nations and the Crown is not explicit, but a process that continues and calls for consultation and accommodation, two benchmarks of reconciliation. The first step of reconciliation began long ago when Sir John A. Macdonald stated, the only way to deal with the Indians was to be firm and just. After a treaty had been fairly made, it should be honestly carried out in spirit and in letter. In addition, Alexander Morris, the former Lieutenant Governor of Manitoba stated, I consider it of importance that an officer or officers of the government should maintain constant communication with the tribes and see that all the provisions of the treaty are rigidly carried out. 
key principles expressed in the Royal Commission on Aboriginal Peoples with respect to reconciliation are mutual recognition, mutual respect, mutual benefit, and mutual responsibility. The Treaty Relation Commission of Manitoba envisions that honoring First Nations Treaty Day at the Manitoba Legislature will help to revitalize and enhance the treaty relationship. When treaties were entered into between First Nations and the Crown, they became fundamental building blocks to the rights enjoyed by First Nations and Manitobans. These rights are not only expressed in written form, but also in the spirit and intent of the treaties. <clears throat> 